It's been a year since Professor Charles Xavier was nearly killed. The X-Men have carried on without him, but it hasn't been easy. I've stepped up to fill the void left by Xavier. Jean is by my side as always. Together we guide the team through these uncertain times. Beast, Wolverine Storm and Rogue round out the core group. The Xavier Institute still stands as a beacon of hope for mutants everywhere. Students come here to learn and grow, to master their powers. But it's not just a school anymore, it's also the X-Men's base of operations. The team has grown stronger through adversity, they've learned to rely on each other more than ever. Yet, the X-Men press on, determined to fulfill Xavier's dream of peaceful coexistence between mutants and humans. The X-Men's mission has evolved. They're no longer operating in the shadows. The United Nations has officially sanctioned their activities. It's a big step forward for mutant rights. The team now has the authority to intervene in mutant-related crises worldwide. This new status comes with responsibilities. The X-Men must be more transparent than ever. They work closely with government agencies, sometimes leading to tension. Not everyone trusts mutants, even now. With their new mandate, the X-Men have expanded their reach. They respond to mutant emergencies across the globe. From natural disasters to anti-mutant violence, they're there to help. But not everyone is happy with this arrangement. The Friends of Humanity, an anti-mutant hate group, has become more active, pushing back against mutant acceptance. The call came in late one night. A young mutant was in trouble. Roberto da Costa, also known as Sunspot, had been kidnapped by the Friends of Humanity. They saw Roberto as a symbol of mutant integration and wanted to make an example of him. We sprang into action. I devised a plan. Storm and Wolverine would lead the rescue team, with Rogue and Beast providing backup. We tracked the Friends of Humanity to an abandoned warehouse. Inside, they found Roberto chained up, beaten but alive. The Friends of Humanity had been planning to publicly execute him. It would have been a devastating blow to mutant-human relations. But the X-Men weren't about to let that happen. A fierce battle ensued. Wolverine's claws clashed with gunfire. Storm's lightning lit up the night. In the end, the X-Men prevailed. They freed Roberto and captured the hate group's leaders. I owe my life to the X-Men. They saved me from a terrible fate. I'll never forget what they did for me. With Roberto safe, the X-Men turned their attention to a bigger threat. Bolivar Trask, the creator of the Sentinels, was still at large. These giant robots posed a grave danger to all mutants. Finding Trask became the team's top priority. They had an unlikely ally in their search, Henry Peter Gierig. Once an enemy, I now worked with the X-Men, providing valuable intel on Trask's possible whereabouts. That's where Cerebro came in. Xavier's powerful mutant detecting machine was their best hope. Beast took charge of the operation, modifying Cerebro to search for Trask's unique brain pattern. Days turned into weeks, with false leads and dead ends frustrating the team. But they refused to give up. Trask had to be found. The fate of mutant kind depended on it. Finally, Cerebro picked up a signal. It was faint, but it was there. Trask was hiding in the Sahara Desert. The X-Men mobilized immediately, flying the Blackbird across the ocean. What they found shocked them, a massive junkyard of deactivated sentinels stretched across the dunes. Hundreds of the towering robots lay dormant. But Trask wasn't going down without a fight. He activated a squad of sentinels. The battle that followed was epic. X-Men versus Machine with the fate of mutants hanging in the balance. Cyclops' optic blasts tore through sentinel armor. Storm called down lightning from clear skies. Wolverine and Beast tag-teamed the giants, bringing them down one by one. In the end, the X-Men stood victorious. Trask was captured, and the sentinel threat was neutralized, for now. With Trask in custody, the X-Men returned home. But the victory felt hollow to some. Cyclops and Jean had been thinking long and hard about their future. They had an announcement to make, one that would change the team forever. They gathered everyone in the mansion's main hall. Jean and I have decided to leave the X-Men. It's time for us to start a new chapter in our lives. We want to focus on our relationship, away from the constant danger. The news hit hard. Cyclops had been the team's leader for so long. Jean was the heart of the X-Men. How would they go on without them? But the couple was firm in their decision. As the team grappled with this change, another shock was in store. 
I arrived at the mansion carrying Xavier's last will and testament. Its contents would turn the X-Men's world upside down once again.